Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to make a garden cart cold frame using recycled wood pallets. I used the wood from two pallets to build my cold frame today. First you'll have to acquire pallets and I suggest the free section on Craigslist. Before you start deconstructing your pallets I recommend that you use gloves and eye protection for safety. Once you get your pallets deconstructed and all the wood laid out it's time to make a plan. I started by taking measurements of my garden cart. I know it was 39 inches long and 19 and a half inches wide. I need the height of my garden cart to be tall enough to allow plants to grow in. I first started with one side being 20 inches and the other side being 15 inches. After drawing this on paper I realized that the slope of my lid was not going to be steep enough for the winter sun. So I had to change one side to 12 inches. You can see the difference that 3 inches makes on the slope. Now I got to figure out the, the length of my lid, and to do this I had to dust off the cobwebs and figure out some math. I started by breaking down the structure into two shapes, a rectangle and a triangle. I assigned measurements to each shape so that I could understand what I was working with. Now I got to figure out the angles of my triangle. The first angle will be up where the hinges will be, and the second angle is where the lid meets the cold frame. I also have to figure out the length of my lid. And to do that, I'm going to designate that with the letter H. To do this, I use the Pythagorean Theorem. As you remember, it's A squared plus B squared equals H squared. I plug my measurements into the formula, and the length of my lid will be 21 inches. Now I've got to figure out the two angles. First, I'm going to start with the upper angle. This is where the hinges will attach. I'm going to call this angle A. And to do this, I'm going to need to use the old Sokotoa acronym to help me with these measurements. SOKOTOA stands for sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. I will be finding the cosine of A using the adjacent over hypotenuse. This means I will be using 8 inches divided by 21 inches to help figure out the angle. It helps to have a calculator or use a table to figure out these formulas. The angle ends up being 67 degrees. Now I gotta figure out the angle where my lid meets the cold frame. I'm gonna call this angle B. I know two of my angles, 90 degrees and 67 degrees. If I add these two together and subtract them from 180, I will get angle B. As it turns out, angle B is 23 degrees. Now I have all the measurements for my cold frame, and I can begin my measurements for my cuts. My frame is going to be one inch wide, so I had to rip down some of the wood to get the right width for my frame. A table saw would have been ideal, but I used a handheld circular saw to make my cuts. It worked out pretty well. I started to assemble the sides and fit them into the garden cart to make sure that they fit snugly. I have to remember that you know, with change in weather, they might expand and contract a little bit, so I don't want them to get stuck in my cart. I left a little bit of room for expansion and contraction. Using the angles for my measurements, I adjusted my saw and made the appropriate cuts for the rails that are going to support my lid. Once the angles have been cut, I screwed them onto the cold frame. The side panels were cut and attached to complete the box. Now it's time to design and build the lid. I constructed the frame out of the same one inch uh, wood and purchased a piece of polycarb two millimeter for the lid. The polycarb cost about forty dollars at a local hardware store. It should withstand shattering from hail and fading from the sun. To prevent the wood from rotting and fading I tried to find a non-VOC uh, stain that I could apply to the exterior of the cold frame to help uh, make it last a little bit longer. To keep the cold frame a little extra warm in the winter I decided to purchase some self-adhesing duct insulation and apply it to the interior of the cold frame. It didn't stick so well so I used some 3M 90 strength spray to help keep it in place. This worked pretty well. I also attached the polycarb on the interior with a set of uh, screws that help hold the insulation in place. 
You should always pre-drill your holes into your polycarbonate materials to allow for some expansion of the screws as well as the material and prevents cracking. Once all the polycarb was attached, the coal frame was really starting to look sharp. As you can see here, in order to keep the cold frame cool on hot days and warm on cold days, I decided to purchase a Univent automatic vent opener. In order to prevent heat loss through the floor, I used a piece of recycled polystyrene that I found in the neighborhood. I attached an 18 foot strand of rope lights and secured them with two, two pieces of tile to create a seed warming bed. Three aluminum baking trays work perfectly as water catchment and to start seeds in. I placed a thermometer and a couple jugs of water in the cold frame to act as a thermal mass. This will help prevent big fluctuations in temperature. I started with spinach and lettuce in my grow trays. and Once the seeds germinated, I used a do-it-yourself grow light that I found from another YouTube site. It was easy to build and it provided just enough light for those short winter days. My wife started our summer plants indoors, which included tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, and some herbs. These will be transferred outside as the days get longer. I removed the growing trays from the cold frame so that they can continue to grow indoors under the grow lamp. The cold frame has been moved back outside and is ready for a new batch of seed starts. Or it can be used to harden off these plants as they become more mature. The spinach and lettuce have done remarkably well, and before too long we'll be harvesting them and eating fresh salads. I think this design provides a blend of versatility, compactability, and mobility for small gardening areas and apartments. Overall, I'm pleased with this design. On average, it keeps the temperature approximately 10 degrees warmer inside the coal frame than the outside temperature. As you can see on this particular day, the max temperature in the last 24 hours was 75 degrees, and the low temperature was 57 degrees inside the cold frame. I hope this video has been helpful for you, and I look forward to your comments and suggestions. Thanks for watching.